the escalation is inevitable. As Ukrainian authorities announced potential attacks against the territory of Russia, including the major cities, such as Moscow and St. Petersburg. And at the same time, Russia might potentially do a fatal mistake, which can cost them everything. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And our first video comes to us reportedly from Colorado, where we can see a huge convoy of Abrams tanks and Bradley armored personal carriers, which are being transported closer to the airport, later to be sent to Ukraine. And according to the deputy press secretary of Pentagon, Sabrina Singh, America is ready to supply weapons and armored vehicles to Ukraine as long as it is required, for as long as this war with Russia is going on. And speaking about the tanks, Poland, besides giving away its 14 Leopard tanks to Ukraine, they are also ready to give 60 more of its PT-91 tanks to Ukraine as well. And in addition to that, Poland is also organizing a so-called energy hub closer to the borders with Ukraine, which means that in case there is another mass attack of Russians against the energy infrastructure of Ukraine, Poland will be able to swiftly transport generators to Ukraine. And then back to the tanks once again, right here is the video presented to us by the Ministry of Defense of the United Kingdom, which shows the capabilities of NATO tanks, such as Leopards and Challengers too. And this video basically shows the firepower that Ukraine is expected to receive with these tanks. And then right here is the updated statistics about the list of countries and the number of tanks that they are planning to send it to Ukraine. And as of today, this number is 321 tanks. And if you remember previously, the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian forces, Valery Zaluzhny, he mentioned that in order for Ukrainian counteroffensive to be successful, they will need at least 300 tanks. And so right now, the timing is of the essence. Ukraine needs to receive these tanks as soon as possible, before Russians can regroup themselves and resupply themselves and launch their own offensive. And speaking about the deliveries of military vehicles, it is not over yet, because we have a surprise. According to the same representative of Pentagon, Sabrina Singh, America does not deny the opportunity that they might send their fighter jets f 16 to Ukraine as well. Because then we even have this intriguing video presented to us by the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Oleksiy Danilov, which shows the capabilities of these above-mentioned F-16 fighter jets. And the video ended with the phrase saying, soon to be seen in the skies of Ukraine. And to make things even more intriguing, here is the tweet from the official Twitter account of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. And so yes, without a doubt, this week has been one of the greatest weeks since the beginning of this war for Ukraine, with all these announcements of Western weapons and military vehicles deliveries. And to be honest, this can become the fatal mistake of Russians, in case they become impatient and, I mean, or scared, and they decide to attack before they are fully ready to do this, in order to attack the Ukraine before they receive all these Western vehicles. And so, as you already know it, right now both countries go through this huge stalemate and uncertainty. And that's why, partially, nothing much is happening on the front lines, with both sides waiting for someone else to do the first step, hoping they will make a mistake. On the one hand, we have Russians, who if they attack right now, when they are not yet fully prepared, this will not be enough for them to do a successful offensive. Just pretty much exactly what we've seen in Zaporozhye, where the Russian offensive completely exhausted itself in less than one week. But if Russia decides to wait and be more prepared for this attack, this is when Ukraine will already receive all of these Western weapons, and then the chances of Russians to succeed will be close to zero. But on the other hand, if Ukraine decides to attack right now, they might unfortunately overestimate their potential. I mean, Russian military tactics might be <laughs> extremely questionable to say the least, but they still do learn from their mistakes. 
But if Ukraine delays the counter-offensive, let's say so even after they would have received all these tanks, this gives Russia enough time to regroup, resupply and reinforce themselves in order to fully protect themselves from Ukrainians. In this case, all these long-awaited Western weapons and vehicles might be not as effective as they could have been. And so what we have is a truly massive dilemma for both countries, which means that the next decision that will be made will be most important, most crucial decision that without a doubt will change the course of this war once and for all. And if you don't want to miss what this decision is going to be, just please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and see how I live outside of YouTube. Alright, and before we talk about this inevitable escalation and the announcement of the Ukrainian authorities that are planning to attack the territory of Russia, including major cities such as Moscow and St. Petersburg, allow me to show you just two more photos and share with you the devastating for Russian statistics. And our first picture comes to us from Belgorod, where, as you can see, Russian Kamas overturned and six Russian soldiers were injured. And I mean, yes, that's right, no combat activities, nothing, it just overturned. Next we go to the capital of Russia, Moscow, where one of Russian helicopters Mi-8 from the presidential fleet, it has been damaged. According to the initial information, the rear propeller has been damaged when this helicopter tried to land. But according to obviously Russian propaganda, the propeller has been damaged without helicopter even flying. So it's like, yeah, you go out in the morning and you see a huge scratch on the side of your car and you're like, hmm, I wonder how it got there because I haven't even driven my car yet. And you just completely ignore the fact that yesterday you were drinking and while drunk driving you accidentally hit your neighbor's car. Full disclaimer here, please don't drink and drive. But okay, because we already know that according to the Russian propaganda, everything is Russia is always fine, good and goes in accordance to the plan. Such as for example this perfect statement by the Ministry of Defense of Russia that as a result of this mass attack that happened on January 26th, Russia was able to accomplish all of its goals which includes the destruction of the energy infrastructure responsible supplying the energy to the defense sector of Ukraine, disrupting the Ukrainian logistics and disrupting the western supply of the weapons. So pretty much yes, according to Russia, every single problem was solved in one day. But in reality, since we already started speaking about this mass attack, in fact Russia is critically low on its missiles. And obviously, with the number of these mass shellings which are becoming less and less effective, Russia is using or I mean wasting these missiles way faster than they can build them. Such as for example Kaliber and X-101 and X-555 missiles, which are one of the most common missiles that Russia uses. And Russia only has approximately 9 and 15% of them left respectively. And by the way, and I guess you already know it, I'm still giving away this one week free trial on my Patreon, where you can access hundreds of photos and videos that do not make into my daily episodes. And if you want to access this full uncensored raw footage of the combat activities, special forces operations, drone footage and many more, the link will be down below. Alright, and now let's talk about this inevitable escalation, and after this I'll give you a brief update from the east and the south of Ukraine, with one more devastating fact about the Russian army. And so, according to the advisor to the president of Ukraine, Mikhail Podolyak, the escalation is inevitable, and Ukraine will be attacking the targets inside of Russia territory, including the major cities, such as Moscow, St. Petersburg and Yekaterinburg. And then according to the representative of the defense intelligence of Ukraine, Vadim Skibitsky, so in case Ukraine was able to reach such distant targets as Engels airfield, Kremlin is also within the reach. What he means by that is that at this very moment there is a massive regroup of Russian forces, both inside and outside of Ukraine. And so in order for Ukrainians to even prevent the possibility of Russian offensive in the future, they need to attack the Russian targets, including doesn't matter even if they're located on the territory of Russia. 
because in case Ukraine is selective and they only attack those territories which are approved by Russia, sooner or later those other Russians from Russia will start marching on Ukraine. And that is why it is so crucial for Ukraine not to be overwhelmed with these empty threats by Russians and lead the war in the way it's supposed to be led. Which means attacking the military targets which present the highest threat, no matter where they are located. In response to that, as always, the press secretary of Russia, Dmitry Peskov, he said that these words by Podolyak and Skibitsky, they only confirm the fact that it was the right thing to do for Russia to start this special military operation. Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about the south and the east of Ukraine. And first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians are not conducting the offensive in the Zaporozhye region, which is enough to be called a full-scale offensive. Which is pretty much the direct confirmation of the statement that I presented in my previous video about that Russian offensive in the south has completely exhausted in less than one week. Next we go to the east, where according to the same report, Ukrainians were conducting a counter-offensive along Kriminna and they were even able to destroy a Russian military base next to this settlement. But the main concentration of Russian efforts as always was next to Bakhmut and this more recently next to Vuhledar. At this very moment Russians are bringing massive reinforcements to this area, do constant frontal assaults and routinely shell the logistics routes of Ukrainians. But so far Ukrainians are able to hold their ground. And right now let's take a look at this map which shows us the changes in territorial control. And the biggest success of Russians in the last 24 hours is that they were able to advance a little bit to the west of Klishivka. Going more to the north, we can see that Russians were also able to invade more land to the northwest of Bilohirivka. But then even more to the north, Ukrainians were able to decontest a pretty good area next to another Bilohirivka. And ultimately, Ukrainians were able to liberate more land closer to this Svatovy Kriminna highway. And then right here is your another devastating fact about the Russian army, which is according to the representative of the defense intelligence of Ukraine, Andrei Chernyak, Russia has approximately a 40% shortage of younger officers. These are the kinds of officers who are also present on the front lines and they usually go in attack along with their units and platoons. But because there is such a huge shortage of them, sometimes Russian soldiers are commanded just to go attack without being properly organized. Which basically means, as you have probably seen in one of my previous videos, Russian soldiers just literally run across the field, just like during the Second and the First World Wars. And obviously, without being properly coordinated or receiving the support from the military vehicles or artillery, these people are just doomed to fail. Which pretty much also explains the reason for such high losses from the Russian side. And so, in order to try and save the situation, according to Western media sources, Putin is scrambling all of his forces for one potentially ultimate offensive and in case this does not work, he is also preparing for years of this war. So yes, let's first talk about this scenario when this war extends for years. In this case, as you already see it, Putin does not have a problem using the military tactics of 100 plus years ago, which is basically winning battles with the numbers of people. And this might potentially be successfully executed by him thanks to these endless partial, always partial mobilizations and putting the Russian economy on the military tracks. The majority of production inside Russia will be targeting the front lines and thanks to massive 24-7 propaganda, the people of Russia themselves will be prepared subconsciously for this conflict to be extended for many years. And the main idea here will be to exhaust not maybe Ukraine, but the western countries. 
and as a result of this, in the best case scenario for Russia, Western countries will simply get tired of supporting Ukraine and it will be them who will be forcing Zelensky to talk with Putin and agree to at least some kind of peace negotiations. Such as for example allowing Russia to keep the Crimea and officially recognizing it as a part of Russia, at least for some years. But since Ukraine and especially President Zelensky, they already mentioned it several times, that Ukraine is not planning to give even a centimeter of its land, most likely this option will be very questionable. And as a result of this, let's review another scenario, where Putin assembles all of his forces, whatever is left at this very moment, for one ultimate counteroffensive. This attack will most likely be the final attempt of Putin to redeem himself as a political and a wartime leader, at least in the eyes of his inner circle and the people of Russia. Because as we already know it, as soon as Ukrainians came to their senses and started liberating their own land, it was Ukraine which liberated massive territories, such as Kharkov and Kherson, and Russia was struggling for more than half a year, and they were only able to take Solidar. And what it means is that the next offensive of Russia will be crucial for Putin as a politician, because in case he loses here as well, this will completely ruin his reputation inside Russia. And first of all, this will mean that this second army of the world that Putin was propagandizing so much in the last several years, pretty much they cannot do anything. And then the people of Russia will start questioning themselves. Is this the only thing that Putin was lying to us? And this once again brings us to the dilemma of Russia, whether they should attack right now, before Ukraine receives the western weapons, or if they should wait and assemble forces themselves. And so, here is the initial question of this video once again. Is Russia about to make a fatal mistake by attacking Ukraine too soon? And personally, I would say that we will get our answer, or at least a hint of it in the next couple of months. And once again, if you don't want to miss these events as soon as they start happening, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. And if you want to support my work financially, please consider becoming my channel member, use the PayPal link, or become my Patreon, where there is still one week of free access. All the other useful links can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, товарищи, and see you on Monday.